Hello friends, this is Dr. Tamim from DBMCI. In, this is already the middle of the year and most of your preparation must be going full steam. I just wanted to share a few insights on what a student must do during preparation this time. Having been in the, in the field of teaching, having spent more than two decades with students, um, I could be able to help you in certain areas where I think people make mistakes and if you can avoid those mistakes, it surely should boost your preparation. Around this time, I've noticed that most students start doing only theory and don't do questions. I think that's a very big mistake because you should be connected with questions. It is the questions that give you a feedback as to what topics you are not that strong in. It, it helps you connect because if you know everything about one particular topic but you don't know how to differentiate, then you lose out on the, on the, on the subject. For example, you might know everything about myasthenia gravis but the question is asking you about how will you differentiate myasthenia from Eaton Lambert. So if you don't know how to differentiate, then you're not able to get that question correct. You might know everything about myasthenia, but you don't know the differentiating feature. And that doing questions will, will help you understand what those differences are. So one of the basic thing is do questions. Now, how much time should you spend doing time doing questions? I think approximately around one third of your time. If you can do doing questions and the rest of the time reading theory, that would be a reasonably good balance. Secondly, at this point, you need to be more focused. You can't do a wide array of things. This is a very focused approach that is required. So doing questions that are very old, maybe two decades old questions may not be the right thing at this time. Might be better to restrict yourself to the last 10 year questions. Whatever questions are circulating in the last 10 years, they are the ones that are going to be very relevant for us. Doing questions that are 20 years, 25 years old back may not be that important. At this point, doing subject-wise books, whatever you are, you know, we have provided from my institute or subject-wise guide that you're using, those questions might be relevant. I don't think it's such a good idea to do questions from the past NEET exams or the DNB exams, simply because except for this year, last exam, NEET used to be conducted over 20 sessions and so many papers, if somebody has to make, naturally they're going to ask questions that, <clears throat> that are very factual, that may not be relevant. Like we saw questions in the last few years on um, people, like they used to show a picture of a person and ask who's the scientist, he was awarded a Nobel Prize for what, or what's the speed of a mosquito. I think those questions are may not have any relevance now because you have a single paper and the quality of questions will be much better. So doing the last three, four years need questions or the DMV questions and most of those books that are there in the market. Um, we nobody can really authenticate whether those questions really came. It was such a confusion. So many days, so many papers, morning session, evening session, and people who were trying to collect the questions. Um, most of the people had no idea whether the question really came in the exam or not. So I don't think it is, uh, it is going to help you much doing those kind of papers. Yes, the last NEET exam that happened, that was a single paper. Everybody agrees on the questions. The choices are clearly there. I mean, that is the kind of paper that you'd like to prepare. Also, I, it would be a good idea doing the AIMS questions or the PGI or the JIPMER questions, especially if you are targeting the institute exams. Even otherwise, these papers will give you an idea about what topics are relevant. Whatever questions are circulating in the exams in the last 10 years, they all are important. One more thing that you should be aware of is you need to find out what your weaknesses are. The best way to find out which subject you are weak in <clears throat> because to do well in the exam you need all the subjects. To find out which subject you are weak in, the, the main way is to give tests. So if you are able to give tests and if you if you are depending on your score, our institute is providing such good tests now, on online tests are available, offline tests are available. So if you are able to give this test and if you can work out where your weaknesses are and focus more on those weak zones, then I think it should do a big boost in your overall preparation. One more thing I have, I have this thing and people come and ask me, sir, you, you are the oldest person teaching in this uh, entrance and um, what advice do you have for us? It's, it's so difficult to generalize and give an advice for everybody because I have noticed that students, all of us are built in different ways. Each, each of us have our individualities and you cannot give a common advice for everyone. But I would tell broadly two categories of students, those who are very good in their conceptual approach, their logic is good. How can one find out whether they are logically good or conceptual approach is good, their reasoning, their rationalizing power is good, is if you are the kind when you see questions, especially from subjects like medicine, 
if you see a question and you're telling okay a is not the answer d is not the answer between b and c you want to decide remember this idea that what helps you eliminate options is your conceptual approach concept tells you this is not the answer memory tells you what is the answer if you have a combination of both then you are made for entrance exams you're going to do very well not all of us are equal some of us are very strong in memory but weak in rationalizing approach these are the students that don't eliminate options for every question they go straight to the answer and there are those who are very good in logic they are able to eliminate one option or they are able to think about what cannot be the answer the concepts are good the rationalizing approach is good but they have a problem they have weak memory so one needs to find out what your strengths are what our weaknesses are if you are if you have a problem in memory then how do you, there's for every problem there is a solution so if a person is not that great in his memory but good in rationalizing approach good in logic understanding subject is good then the way forward is to make good notes if your notes are good even writing notes is such an important art because some people write too much stuff in their notes and make it too voluminous that is also counterproductive a simple or rule of thumb is anything that you write in your notes that you think if you read it you could not or cannot remember it for more than 24 hours don't write that in your notes it's a waste of time it's counterproductive so write that stuff in your notes that will that you will retain even if you read it once you will retain it for, at least for the next day those are those are the points that are valid so don't add everything possible in your notes be careful of what you write secondly don't buy notes from somebody else's notes or don't take it from some xerox shop in fact i would advise that if you are attending classes and you miss one class then don't just take a xerox of it from your friend better you write those notes on your own handwriting no doubt collect the notes from your friend but copy it in your own handwriting and as you're copying it down from your friend you are copying it in your book you will realize there are certain areas that you are weak and you could not understand some topic better to write it before you putting it in your notes better to cross reference better to read something about it and then put it in your notes but no it should be written in your own handwriting another point that i want to stress is that everybody reads where the problem comes with the last 30 40 days where the revision is to be done and that's where i have seen people struggle a lot i would say one simple advice anything printed anything highlighted underlined whatever material text that is there to read it and revise it is generally more difficult than reading and revising from notes notes with your own handwriting are the fastest they are the smoothest they are the best companion you will have in your revising so those of us who are in the habit of not writing notes but who are underlining or highlighting not that you can't revise that you can but generally you will find more difficulty compared to those who are writing notes and who are able to you know read their own handwriting that goes much faster in fact on the day of the exam you'll remember okay i wrote this on the right side of the page i have put this in my notes i have written it that familiarity will come to you so don't take writing notes casually i think it's a very important aspect so coming back to our main theme what i was telling you ki those people who are having problems in memory the way forward is making good notes if your notes are good then your revision is going to go well then you're going to do at least the the stuff that you think you'll you'll forget you you might be able to overcome many of those weaknesses if your problem is not memory if your strength is memory you are strong in memory but your rationalizing approach your elimination power of ruling out a choice is poor then the way forward is to find out what subjects you are having that weakness and in those subjects try to understand the concepts try to understand the thing everything if possible try to go back to pathophysio why is this occurring and what is the response the body's got for example if you have a question in barters and they ask what happens to renin and aldosterone in barters rather than memorizing what the answer is you need to find out what is the patho in barters what is the what defect happens what is the main problem and how does the body counter that if you understand that then it's so easy to understand what happens to renin and aldosterone in barters so it is very important at this phase ki you need to understand what your strengths are what your weaknesses are and work towards your weaknesses finally i would like to summarize that revision is the key in our game and um, revise revise and more revision there's nothing that can replace revision but at the same time sheer hard work and just sheer effort is not not going to be your problem solver what you need to do is understand the subject you need to have a conceptual approach wherever relevant there are some things that we can't do anything about like they ask you tumbling motility is which bacteria 
there is no concept that you can connect over there you just need to know the fact so there are some facts that you need to memorize but a large chunk of subject is conceptual there is a limit to human memory you can't memorize everything whatever you understood on the day of the exam about 30 to 40 percent of stuff you memorized it will disappear it's going to go away it will evaporate what will stay with you under stress is hardcore concept so wherever possible try to understand at this phase i also want to tell you okay some things are better left as they are accept them as they are some people go too much behind concept when i tell them try to understand a subject like there was one student he started reading a lot about why st elevation occurs in myocardial infarction and some things you need to just accept as they are and connect the you know what is not relevant for entrances there's no need to go into too much depth into that so what we'll tell you what is relevant what is irrelevant is again back to the same thing it's questions so please do questions and if you do questions you'll come to know what is important what is not that relevant and you'll have an idea about what to leave and what to read is so much of stuff it's not possible for a for a person humanly to read everything 19 subjects in the depth in too much depth it's just not possible you just can do as best as you can so these are a few tips about preparation um my best wishes to all of you i hope uh, all of you prepare well um remember that we are all there with you in your struggle and um, wherever we can help wherever we can support you we are definitely always there so my best wishes to all of you good luck